Hi, this is Vic. In this tutorial, we will learn some theory about Java. The first thing we need to know is, what is Java? Java is an object-oriented programming language as well as a computing platform. Object-oriented programming is a programming paradigm that represents concepts as objects. These language focuses on using objects to build strong applications. And Java as a computing platform is a software-only platform that runs on top of other hardware-based platforms. We will look at the Java platform part in the coming section of this tutorial. Now moving on, you might be wondering why Java became so popular. Before I give an answer to this question, let me show you a short animation I have created using GoAnimate.com. Hey! I'm developing a new programming language for electronic devices. It's going to revolutionize the programming of embedded systems. Wow cool! So what's your revolutionizing recipe? I'm giving it many cool features like portability and making it architecture neutral. That's impressive. But don't you think this recipe is what Internet is looking for? I didn't get you. Internet is booming now, and I think for a distributed system like World Wide Web, this new language you are developing will serve as a boon. Oh yeah. Absolutely right. I should look at a broader picture here. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. The features provided by Java and the Internet collectively led to Java's large-scale success. Java was so apt for distributed world of internet that it did not take much time for Java to become one of the most widely used programming language in the world. And now, in this table, you can see the comparison of languages based on their popularity and Java had always been in the top rankings. So that was the Java success story in brief. Now let's get back to the Java platform part. Java platform is a software only platform that runs on top of other hardware based platforms. Java platform comprises of two main components. The first one is JVM short for Java Virtual Machine and the other is Java API which consists of class libraries. As you may know Java is always associated with a term called architecture neutral language. First, let me tell you what architecture dependence is. In languages like C, C++, the compiler is CPU specific. It behaves differently in different operating systems. That is, a compiler in a 64-bit operating system will behave differently than a compiler in a 32-bit operating system. These languages used to depend on operating systems architecture and hence they were architecture dependent. Now with the use of Java platform in between the source code and the operating system, this implementation is done in the same manner in every operating system. And the dependence on operating systems architecture is removed and this makes Java architecture neutral. Now let's learn about the life cycle of a Java program. Java source code can be written in a plain text editor and saved with an extension of .java. This code is human readable, but not understandable by a computer. So we need various steps to actually run a Java program. As you can see in the diagram, first the code that we write is saved in a file with an extension of .java. The compiler compiles the .java file into an intermediate form called Java bytecode. And the generation of bytecode helps Java in being portable, hence usable in distributed world. This bytecode is saved in a file with an extension of dot class. After this, JVM executes the bytecode produced by the compiler, and in the final step, the program is run on the machine. So this is the complete life cycle of a Java program. For more information on Java platform and object-oriented programming concepts, you may visit 
firstlearner.com. So this is all for now. See you next time.